Yeah, what's up guys? Okay, I'm gonna be showing you how to overclock the GTX 850M. Now many of you probably are aware of the GTX 860M for its fabulous performance. Well, those of you who don't know, but the uh, 850M is practically just the 860M, but with DDR3. And it uses slightly less wattage, it uses 5 less watts. So practically the same chip, just with different clocks and, you know, different memory. But, when you look at their performance, you'll see that the 860M beats the 850M in frame rate by quite a bit on certain games. The reason for that is because the memory clock is really low. Not only is it DDR3, but the memory clock itself is lower than it should be. And because of that, at higher resolutions, especially with anti-aliasing, you'll see a major bottleneck. While the core clock and whatnot and the shaders can keep up, the me memory clock the memory clock cannot keep up with the core so massive bottleneck what you want to do you, what you're going to want to do is get nvidia inspector on here there we go okay now this is the most important part some of you may have seen this where it will not let you change it where it says zero 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 okay to fix this, all you need to do is go to an older driver. The newer drivers, for some reason, you cannot overclock. I do not know why. So, yeah, some of the older drivers, I'm using 337.50. So, if you want to look that up and get that, it'll work. It'll help you overclock it. And what you're going to want to do is, the core clock, overclocking it will not help your performance that much. So, for core clock, I just do 16. So I can get this to go to 1100, perfect 1100. And the memory clock, this is what's going to give you the best performance gain by far. You're going to want to try to get this as high as you can without causing artifacts and without your system crashing. The best I have picked out for my card, for, with uh, which... Uh, Yields the best performance with the most stability is 249. So I use 249 so I can get the memory clock from 1001 to 1250. Now, if you look over here at the uh, default, the, bu the uh, memory bandwidth was only 32 gigs. Now it's 40 gigs. So now your memory bandwidth is good enough to keep up with your core, so you will not be getting bottlenecked anywhere near as much. And in some games, it, it, you will perform almost as well as the 860M, depending on how memory intensive the game is, especially if you turn your anti-aliasing off. You don't want to use anti-aliasing on this card, because anti-aliasing uses a lot of memory bandwidth, and you don't want to have use too much of that. But yeah... So, for example, um, the performance test. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to show you uh, an example of how much of a increase this has get, given me. Performance. So all this loads, of course. So, where is it at? Okay, it's not here right now, but... And I'm not going to play it during this video. I don't have time. But, doing the DirectX 11 test on this uh, application, the default, I was getting 40 FPS on this test. After doing this clock, it went from 40 to 48. That's a massive improvement. And... Out of all these games, I'm going to give you an example. Okay, so Devil May Cry 4, if you guys have played that, there's a forest area, and it uses a lot of memory bandwidth. I have gotten at least 10 FPS more at forest area, just by having this memory clock that much higher. Alan Wake, a lot better. A lot better. Same with Batman. Pretty much all these except for Final Fantasy, maybe Injustice, League of Legends, that's always been easy to run. Life is Strange, the new game that came out, that gave me a massive benefit. Uh, now, after the 
overclock I was able to pretty much get steady 1080p 60 FPS whereas before I was getting like micro stutter like 45 FPS that's another thing that you guys need to realize when your memory bandwidth is super low you'll get a crap ton of micro stutter you'll be like you'll be like 50 FPS and then out of nowhere you'll be at 35 just randomly because your memory bandwidth's getting capped and it's bottlenecking your GPU load after this after you overclock your memory to around this level, it'll be a lot better. Resident Evil 4 Ultimate HD, that got a massive benefit on that. I was getting frame rate drops to like lower 50s. After this overclock, steady 60. Resident Evil HD, yeah, I was getting like lower 40s. Now I'm able to get anywhere from low 50s to 60. So yeah, I'm going to end the video now, guys, but... To recap, main points, you're going to want to overclock your memory, that, that is definitely the biggest. Overclocking your base clock will not yield that much benefit. If your shit says zero, zero, what you're going to have to do is just switch drivers. The newer drivers, you cannot overclock for some reason, so you're going to want to revert to a 337.50 or maybe an earlier one. And yeah, that's about it guys. Uh, okay, peace.